So it's no secret that physics is a practical subject. And again, there's no secret either that in the exam, there's going to be some questions about experiments that you should be aware of. And what I did was I looked at the OCR specifications for the new course, which is being examined uh, in 2016 for the first time. And I looked at the kind of things that they might ask you about. And it says in the specification uh, that you must be able to describe and explain the techniques and procedures used to uh, for the following things. So I'd like to look at these in just a little bit more detail. So starting with module three, I'm not going to read this all out because uh, there's a link to the document just below the video here. But basically you need to know about, you know, how to look at uh, collisions and motion of objects. So uh, trolleys, air track gliders, ticker timers, you might have seen those, uh, light gates and data loggers. And also uh, there's ways that you can use video techniques as well to maybe kind of sort of, uh, sort of look at things frame by frame. Then um, in order to actually determine uh, the acceleration of freefall in the lab, uh, you can basically use a trapdoor and electromagnet arrangement, which basically means that when uh, you switch off the electromagnet, a steel ball falls and it opens a trapdoor, which kind of stops the timer. Um, this one here, terminal velocity in fluids. So, you know, if you drop a ball bearing in some like uh, wash up liquid, perhaps, or maybe you drop a, a, some kind of paper cone in air, how can you work out its terminal velocity? Um, this one here is about just, you know, if you have springs, rubber bands or uh, polythene strips, uh, basically, when you put a mass on them, uh, you can then see the extension and therefore look at things like Hooke's Law and all that good stuff. And then module four, um, there's stuff here about uh, ohmic and non-ohmic conductors. So ohmic conductors include things like resistors, non-ohmic tends to be things like uh, filament lamps and LEDs. Um, how do you determine the resistivity of a metal? So maybe how you actually measure the cross-sectional area, the length uh, and the resistance. Um, internal resistance of a chemical cell or other source of EMF. This one here is often quite tricky, but basically there's a lovely graph that you can plot from that. A potential divider circuits, how do you set up an oscilloscope, you know, with the, the time base and, uh, you know, so all that good stuff. Um, how do you set up a ripple tank, you know, just to actually sort of look at waves. And then you've got polarising effects, uh, maybe with light with a couple of polarisers or using a microwave kit. Um, this one here is kind of very much a GCSE thing, you know, you just shine some light through a block. Um, Superposition basically means you have uh, maybe one set of waves kind of adding to another one. And that's really useful if we think about a double slit and also the diffraction grating. Now, I think for OCR, it, it says that you need to know how to use a diffraction grating, but it doesn't tell you that you need to know the actual equation for that in a specification. So it's worth having a look at the video I made on that. And finally, uh, the speed of sound in, in air by the formation of standing waves in a resonance tube. So these are the practicals. Uh, that you need to know about. If there's anything on the list that you don't understand, now's the time to maybe look at a textbook, to have a look on the internet, or just, you know, go and ask your teacher. If you haven't seen a ticker timer in the course, go and see your teacher and actually have a look at one, see how it works. Because there's a lot of marks available. You need to know about all of these experiments here, how you'd set up the equipment, the measurements that you'd take, and then what you do with that data, perhaps what kind of graph you might plot. And you also need to know um, about the kind of, sort of the basic skills, you know, things about, uh, you know, percentage uncertainty, uh, um, you know, minimizing errors and things like that. So again, I've got a load more videos that I've linked to from this. So hopefully, um, you know, you can do the work before the exam. Uh, the link to this document is on my web, it is just beneath the video, and that takes you to the website where you can have a look at the document and use this as you structure your revision. Apart from that, I uh, hope it all goes well and good luck. Thank you.